Good afternoon. In this video, I will talk to you about taxation in perfectly competitive markets and we will compare it to settings where the seller has market power. We will also see how taxation affects the deadweight loss in a market. Assume that a $5 tax is imposed on the sale of a good which previously was not taxed. Usually, the seller is the one who is responsible to pay the tax to the revenue service after every sale. But does the seller pay the tax from his pocket or passes it to the consumer through a price increase? We will use demand and supply analysis to answer this question. So we must first figure out how a sales tax affects the supply demand system. The demand decision by the consumers doesn't seem to have any reason to be affected. A rational consumer cares about how much he or she has to take out of pocket to take the product home not for the portion of the money the seller will keep and how much will go to the government. On the other hand, the supply decision by the seller should be affected. This is because the seller, along with his other costs of production, now must pay $5 tax to the government for each unit sold. Therefore, the marginal cost rises by $5. In a perfectly competitive setting, this will be reflected with an upward shift of the supply curve because as we know in perfect competition the marginal cost of production is behind the supply curve. In a setting with market power where no supply curve is formally defined we will just have the MC curve to shift upwards. Let's see how taxation affects a perfectly competitive market first. Here we have a market that equilibrates at A where price is $10 and quantity is 400 units. If a sale tax of $5 per unit is imposed, the supply curve will now shift upwards to the position MC plus T. This will cause the market to equilibrate at B, where quantity is now lower, 320 units, but price is higher, $13. Notice that the price that consumers used to pay was $10, and after the tax, it became $13. So the $5 tax increased the price by only $3. Yet, the seller is still responsible to pay $5 tax to the government. Thus, the rest $2 will be paid from the seller's pocket, who receives $13 per sale, keeps the 8 and pays the other 5 to the government. Okay, but what if the seller decides to pass the entire tax to the consumers? In other words, why the seller doesn't just go to a point like E instead of B? If the seller sets a price of $15, he will want to supply 400 units at that price. However, the item is now expensive for consumers and they will decrease their quantity demanded to only 280 units. This will create excess supply of 120 units which will generate pressure to the price to decrease. $15 is not an equilibrium price, and if the seller insists on it, competition will undercut at $13, and this seller will not be competitive. Let's see now what happens with market efficiency. Notice in the graph that the actual supply curve is still S, and that the after-tax equilibrium in this market, point B, is not on it. It is still on the actual demand, but not on the actual supply. This is a strong indication that our market has a deadweight loss now. So, at the equilibrium price of $13, consumers forego part of their surplus equal to K, while the seller forgoes part of his surplus equal to L. This means that this market suffers a deadweight loss of K plus L because of the tax. It makes sense, because 80 units are now not sold, causing loss of surplus to both parties. In this graph, it kinda looks like the producer loses a little more surplus than the consumers. Is this always the case? Actually, it is not. Who will lose more surplus depends on the elasticity of the demand and the supply curve. Let's see this. 
In the left graph, the demand is more elastic than supply. The market equilibrates at A till the tax moves the supply to S plus T, bringing the equilibrium point to B. At B, the consumer's loss of surplus, denoted by K, is this small yellow triangle, while the loss of the producer, denoted by L, is this much larger blue-green triangle. So, when the demand is more elastic than supply, the tax burden on the seller exceeds that on the consumers, and also sellers lose more surplus than consumers. This is because the buyers in this market are very sensitive to price changes, because with an elastic demand, a small change in price causes a large response to quantity. At the same time, the suppliers are not that sensitive to price changes. So it seems natural that the tax burden will fall more on the producer. This situation describes very well what happens in the markets of most agricultural goods and explains why governments avoid imposing heavy taxation on agricultural products as the burden of the tax may cause farmers to drop below the poverty line. Because look how low B' has fallen. In the graph on the right now, we have the reverse situation. The supply is more elastic than the demand. This market equilibrates at A. The tax again shifts the supply curve upwards and brings the equilibrium to B. Now the yellow triangle is much larger than the blue-green triangle. So, when the demand is less elastic than the supply, the tax burden on the consumers exceeds that on the sellers, and consumers lose more surplus than the sellers. Notice here, however, that the tax in both graphs is exactly the same. Let me show you now a market power situation. I have picked this example to make a particular point, so follow along. Here is a demand function. It is curved so that its elasticity will be kind of constant. The marginal revenue curve for this demand will, as usual, start from the same point on the vertical axis and go down with double the slope. Let's also assume that marginal cost for this seller is completely horizontal. MR equals MC occurs at A prime. This yields a quantity of 180 at an equilibrium price of $20. If now a tax of $5 per unit is imposed, MC will shift upwards to MC plus T, and MR equals MC will occur at B prime. Thus, the market will go to point B, where quantity drops to 80 and price increases to $28. So this seller not only transferred the entire tax to the consumers, but also inflated the after-tax price by three more dollars. For the seller, this price hike is the best option after the tax is imposed in order to re-establish an effective profit margin. However, the seller received less profit at B compared to A. This is the profit before the tax, and this is the profit after the tax. Increasing the price is indeed the best option but the tax did have a negative impact to the seller as well. As we know, market power settings always involve deadweight losses. Taxation in this market will make the inefficiency worse. Here is a deadweight loss before the tax. Of course, it continues outside the graph to the right till the demand intersects with the marginal cost. And here is the additional deadweight loss caused by the tax. If you look closely, you will see that the tax caused the seller to lose the area in the red frame to the deadweight loss, but in response, he grabbed the area in the green frame from the consumers. If you had different looking demand and MC curves, you may not observe the tax burden on the consumer to exceed the total tax. Still, in most market power settings, a high sales tax ruins the efficiency of the market. So, next time you will listen to the beautiful words of a politician promising to impose sales taxes to all those evil monopolists instead of the small businesses, and they will not do it once they are elected, you will know the reason.
If you have any questions, write them down below in the comment section and I will answer them. Of course, before you add the question, check first if it has already been asked and answered. Thanks for watching.